of Abby's personally sponsored coaches? Um, nope, Ashley and Dillinger. So okay, she's yeah, under Abby. Yeah, okay, gotcha. Get it, Beth? Yeah, got it. Gotcha. Um, did you, did she send you that email? She or C. No, okay. she said that she clicked on the app. Um, it said that she needed an invitation to use the app. To the My Challenge Tracker app, yes. We have to yes. send her an email. Mm -hmm. I gotcha. Okay. That's what it is. That's what it is. Gotcha. I thought you meant, like, so I thought you meant for her Beachbody On Demand. She couldn't get well, lost. Well, that's what I thought, too. That's what she had originally told me, so. I <laughs> she just has to log in. Right. Yeah. But I told her. Okay. Yeah, the app. She must have tried to get in the My Challenge Tracker app. Yep. Okay. Yeah, we'll figure it out. Okay. okay. All right. Thanks. Yeah, no problem. Um, no problem. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to mute you guys just so it's not like um, fuzzy, but unmute yourself if you have a question or whatever. Uh, but I am going to share my screen with you guys. And like I said, <laughs> I legit, like you guys can see that, right? Can you see the social media? Okay. Um, this is one of my favorite favorite things to train new coaches on because I know that it is scary um, to start posting on social media. I know that it, you're probably like, what do I say? You know, I don't take selfies. Like I definitely don't talk in stories, that kind of thing. Right. But um, social media is such a good thing. <laughs> like it is such a good thing um, in a world where it can be used for so many bad things. The way that I see it is that we have this great opportunity opportunity to hustle with like a holy heart and really put good stuff out there, especially in the health and fitness world. You know, there's so much in the health and fitness world that focuses on size and shape and weight and things like that. And we get to absolutely tell our story, um, tell it with integrity, show people that you don't have to be perfect to get healthy or be healthy. Um, and we also, for me personally, sharing my faith has, this has just emboldened me in ways I never expected. All right. So we are going to walk through this tonight. I'm going to give you some very practical tips and, you know, we're going to do things like talk about your bio. We're going to talk about posting, how often you should be posting, what you should be putting in your stories. And at the end, I really want to touch on how to have a healthy, relationship with your phone and with social media, all right? Um, because it can easily spiral out of control and we don't want it to. And you may end up there sometimes and you may have to rein yourself back in from scrolling all the time or comparing yourself to other people or, you know, saying, I don't know what to say. Like, we're going to talk about all those things and I just want you to understand this is a process. You're not going to start posting tomorrow and have it all figured out and be confident overnight. You're going to be confident, become confident after you do the things. So if you're waiting to start posting, to start doing stories, to start inviting, like you're never going to feel confident first. You, the confidence comes from doing these things. All right. So trust me, trust Abby. We're going to guide you um, fearlessly. So this was just a quote that I love. It says social media is about sociology and psychology more than technology. Um, and anybody, I mean, everybody has an iPhone in their hand today. Everybody has an access to Instagram and Facebook. Um, and it is a place that everybody is. Like you, I don't really know many people under 50 who aren't on social media, right? Um, but what we do with it, what we say, how we communicate is going to be the heart and soul of our business. All right. So this is important. Um, using social media, if you don't post, if you're not posting, if you're not using stories, if you're not posting on Facebook and Instagram and connecting with people there, then honestly, you don't have a business. You do not have a business. Um, because just like you would open a restaurant in a brick and mortar store, uh, but leave the doors closed or not tell people about it or not invite people to come in, like that's not how you run a business. And so social media is your brick and mortar. It's your platform. It's your office space. That's what I say all the time. I get so frustrated with coaches who tell me they're working their business, but they're not posting. They're not inviting. They're not sharing their journey on social media. And I'm like, sister, you're not going into your office. Like you're not going to work, right? Um, and if I didn't go into my office or go to my, my office space at a, 
a day job, like I would get fired, right? So social media is how and where you grow your business. And so tonight we're going to talk about Y'all, my house smells like brownies because I had to make them for Milo's class tomorrow. It smells really good. It's a little distracting. <laughs> um, we're going to talk about tonight setting up your Instagram page. We're going to talk about how to grow your following. We're going to talk about sharing versus selling. Raise of hands if you're worried about selling, sounding salesy. Um, we're going to talk about the basics of Instagram stories. Again, these are a must. Um, how not to use social media. I'm going to share with you guys some of my favorite apps to help you get started and then some tips for maintaining a healthy relationship with social media. Um, and I'm even going to, I think my little cord here will work and allow me to share my screen with you at some point. Hopefully let's say a prayer except that the cat like pulled it out. No, it didn't. Okay. All right, let's talk about your Instagram bio. If you are not on your phone, if you have your phone in front of you, maybe you are on your phone and that's okay. Um, but I'll share these slides. Actually, you know, my coaches, this, this whole, oh my gosh. Oh, my, oh I know what happened. Okay. Sorry. Um, I plugged my phone in and it disconnected me. Okay. Um, this whole PowerPoint presentation, and I can upload it into our training is you have access to this. So you can come back and look at this. Oh my goodness, I think I keep hitting a button, sorry. Um, but there are also some links. If you see at the bottom of this page, um, there's it says podcast on using IG effectively. Like I actually put some links into this PDF to that you can click on and listen to some really good podcasts, some of my favorites about this. Um, setting up your Instagram page, this is important, okay? Your bio should not say Beachbody coach in it. It should not have links to your Beachbody accounts. It shouldn't have anything like that. It should be very personal. Now, I have some something in here that says fit-ish, right? Yes, that's good. People know I'm into fitness. People are going to know that I'm into fitness by going to my page and seeing what I post and what I talk about, right? Um, now, if there's a link in there, we're going to teach you guys how to set up a link for your page so that people can get access about boot camps. If you have a blog, if you have like a special resource that you want to share or like a, a devotion that you love to follow or read or something, you can put those things in there so people can learn how to connect with you and learn more about you. But your bio is the first thing that your new followers are going to see. And if they come in and they see Beachbody coach, join my team, you know, like click this link to buy something, they're going to run away. They're going to run away. They're going to see sales and they're going to run away. All right. So you want to keep it very, very personal. Keep it short. You can only post, I don't know how many characters, but you can only post so many characters in your bio and it should definitely reflect you. So mine has said many different things, but this is currently what it says. Um, encouraging women to follow God first and everything else second. Boy mama, fit-ish. I'm a Southern gal and a gold getter. And I think it says, now actually I think it says... Oh my gosh, I don't know what that is. What was that? That was like freaky. I have no idea what that was. Okay, so now mine says, um, humble to work with you. And there's, a, there's arrows pointing to my link, okay? So people know there's an opportunity to work with me and they're gonna figure that out by what I post in my content, right? But I want them to know first, my faith is important. I'm a mama, that's really important to me. You know, I'm a Southern girl. Goal getter implies that I do have some type of business and then fit ish is kind of like, yeah, I like to work out, but I like to also like drink a glass of wine sometimes and have a brownie. Right. Um, so that is what my bio says. So just work on it, play with it. If you need help with it, uh, let us know, you know, Beth, you're the one I know on here, um, more than other people, like you probably say mama fur babies or something like that, you know, include that cause that's important to you. Um, and so, um, what not to do. Like I said before, no beach body lingo, no beach body links, nothing like that. Cause there's a thousand and one coaches out there and you want to be different than the rest of them. All right. That's the biggest thing. You guys ask me questions if you have them in the chat bar. All right. All right. So another thing that's really important, and this is important now, and it's going to be important five years from now in your coaching business, you have to grow your social media. I started with no followers on Instagram, literally started at zero. I started on Facebook with 150 friends, less than 150 friends, did not use social media, 
didn't post on Instagram at all. Actually, I would post on there. Nobody followed me. I would post on there because I like the filters I could put on it and it would save it to my phone. And then I would take the picture and I would post it on Facebook just so that my friends and family or whomever that didn't live close by could see me, right? Like I was not a social media girl. And if I can start at ground zero and make it to where I'm at, like anybody can do it, all right? But you have to grow. So if I started with nothing, I had to start following people, right? Facebook makes that very easy. And I know that at one point you are going to probably choose a path to really grow your Instagram or really grow your Facebook. Uh, but right now you have both. So I would honestly encourage you to do duplicate your posts. Um, the ones you put on Instagram, also put them on Facebook and grow both. Because right now Facebook is kind of your safe place. It's probably where you're, the people that know you the best are. So don't, don't skip, don't just say, okay, Instagram's the place to be like, but post on uh, Facebook and follow people. You can add, you can follow up to, um, 5,000 people, I think on Facebook, and then it caps you off on your personal page on Instagram. It's limitless, like limitless. You can end up with a three point billion followers probably. Um, but you have to grow. Okay. So look at, look at how many, I want you guys to look at how many people right now I want you to do this and type it in the chat bar. Tell me how many followers you have right now on Instagram and how many friends you have on Facebook. All right. So do that and type it in the chat bar. Um, every day you are going to grow this. And I do mean every day, except Sunday, you don't have to on Sunday. Um, follow at least 10 new people on Instagram and then add five to 10 new friends on Facebook. Facebook tells you who to, who to friend based on uh, common friend requests that you have in common and the Instagram, honestly, I do the same thing. It doesn't suggest for me to follow Sally because she's a friend of Susie, but I will go to my friends, Instagram pages or to a local boutique or one of my favorite boutiques in my favorite city or a really cool little coffee shop. And I will follow people who are following that account. So if I always use my example of my college bestie, my uh, roommate from college, she is part of Beachbody with me. She's, um, not a coach though. So I wouldn't go to another coach's account and follow people who are following her, but I'm going to go to people that I know and like, and that we have a lot of things in common. So Ashley and I have a lot in common. We went to the same college. We have small kids or we have young children. Um, you know, I know what she's like. I know where she shops. I know who she is. And I know that her friends would be similar to my friends. So I will go to some friends, Instagram pages, and I'll look to see who follows them or I'll look to see who liked their last post and I'll just follow those people because I already know we have things in common, right? And this is not icky, it's not strange, it's not unnatural. Um, people do it all the time, social media is social. That's the whole point. So don't use that excuse. I don't want people to think I'm trying to sell them something. You're not, you're sending them a friend request, okay? So you have to grow. So follow 10 new people on Instagram every day and friend request 10 new people on Facebook every day. Um, and so one of the things I want you to think about, and I'll repeat this often, uh, your, the number of people following you at some point should be greater than the number of people you are following. So I follow new people every day, but I also unfollow people every day. It's just part of the Instagram algorithm. And um, unfollowing, I want the number of people who are following me to be a lot bigger than the number of people I am following. Okay. So I will go through and I'll look to see if people didn't accept my friend request or I'll unfollow males or something like that. Cause I just keep it pretty much women. All right. Um, another way to find people on Instagram is to search hashtags. So one of the things you're going to do is you're going to take that color wheel we gave you early on and you are going to sit down and you're going to make a list of hashtags totally unrelated listen to this, unrelated to coaching and fitness, but related to you. Because you don't want to go follow a bunch of other coaches or people who already have a fitness routine, right? You want to find people who are like you were when you started, who didn't have, um, didn't have anything and you needed something. So make a list of hashtags for me, things that have to do with boy mom or Mississippi mom or like history teacher or retired teacher or, um, you know, like Major Craig was a big part of, of my, my journey. Um, you know, your favorite authors, um, favorite places to visit. Like if you like to go bowling, you know, like whatever it is, just think about, just think about you and make a list of hashtags and you are going to search those and you'll look for people who use those hashtags too. And you can follow those people as well. Again, it's supposed to be social. Don't be afraid to follow new people. That's what this is about. Okay. 
So I said this, go to your favorite small business accounts. Like if you like to shop local boutiques or little small brands or, or, um, you know, I like to go to influencers pages, people like Lisa Turkish is huge. So that's really big. I wouldn't go to her, but smaller people, maybe like, um, Lisa Whittle, she's not that small, but you know, like other people who are faith-based influencers who don't have really huge, when I say really huge accounts, I mean like 20, 30,000 plus, you know, smaller ones. And so all I'll do is if I went to Lisa Whittle's Instagram page, I would go to one of her posts and then I would look to see who liked the post, who actively liked it. Um, and I would follow those people. All right. I think you can follow up to 50 people an hour. I think that's how Instagram works before they like flag you and say, what's this person doing? Um, but this does take time. Again, just like everything, it's a process. You're not going to wake up tomorrow with 10,000 followers. Okay. You, but I would set a goal every month to try to double your following right now. Okay. And it may not happen, but if you don't double it and you just increase it by half, you're still winning. Okay. So this is done daily and consistently. Um, Let's see, did anybody have questions or did you just answer my question? I don't have my chat bar pulled up. Um, all right, so next thing, let's talk about posting strategy. Um, this is important. Again, I'm sorry, I'm moving y'all around. I don't know if y'all can see me doing that, but I can't see my slides because y'all's faces are in the way, as lovely as they are. Um, okay, so posting strategy. This is how you communicate with people. This is how you communicate with people. This is how you tell your story. This is how you inspire, you educate, you, you entertain. This is how you get to show your personality to the people who follow you, all right? So come up with a posting strategy every week. Towards the end of this training, I will tell you, I'll teach you how I make my posting strategy. Um, I actually make a plan, a marketing plan for my business every month. So I know what I'm inviting to, I know what's coming up in my life. And then every week, every Saturday or Sunday, I sit down, I create some margins some white space. And I just make, I actually plan out what I'm going to post the whole week. All right. So I'm just posting once a day on my Instagram page on Facebook. You can post a little bit more, but on Instagram, you do not want to post more than once a day, but you do want to pay post at least four to five times a week. All right. Um, because if you don't, people are going to go to your page and be like, Oh, she's up to nothing or I don't have any information on what you're doing. And so, um, this is important. So I would definitely make at least one post um, on your social media feed a week, an invite, a call to action. So you're inviting to a challenge group, you're inviting to the coaching opportunity, you're inviting people to, to um, I don't know, just have a copy of your meal plan this week, but ask people to do something to take action. Let them know that you're offering something, right? And you're going to invite more in your stories, but at least once a week, Sunday nights are a really good time to do this. Um, but you're going to have a posting strategy for me personally. Um, my posting strategy kind of goes like this Mondays. I like to really inspire. It's Monday. People are tired. They don't want to get up and work out. Maybe they bombed over the weekend. I really want to pr provide some inspiration. Sometimes that's an invite. Tuesdays, always Transformation Tuesday. I've done Transformation Tuesday from the first week I was a coach and I still do them. If people don't see your journey, if they don't see your transformation, if you're not getting results, and I'm not getting like crazy results anymore. I never honestly got crazy results. I've never honestly lost more than like 10 to 12 pounds this whole time. But I'm showing people that I am getting a transformation. I'm on a journey and I'm never quitting working on myself. And honestly, I tell the same story a lot. I, said, I tell the same story about how I felt in the beginning and what changed and how this worked for me. And my story is going to inspire people to take action in their own. So every, I, there has to be a transformation in your squares, at least every nine photos. Okay. Cause if people scroll once and they don't see that transformation, then they don't know. So you want that in there. Um, Wednesdays, usually like today, I did that little, that 1% quote is something that's kind of eye catching. Thursdays are usually about coaching. Um, Fridays are kind of up in the air. Saturdays, I like to show people what we do for fun as a family. Um, sometimes I do a coach post, but usually it's like, I just want to let people into my world. You want people to get to know you. It shouldn't be a, an Instagram feed of all like fitness posts or you flexing or challenge group posts, right? Um, if you go to my feed right now, it should reflect what's in my bio, family life, faith, um, you know, like fitness for sure. And then like I do a lot, I focus a lot on marriage because I just feel like that's really part of the ministry God has given me, like healthy marriages. So um, I do try to share that a lot. That will be a post tomorrow. 
always use your own photos. Never use stock photos. Never use a beach body photo. Never go to the to the internet. I mean, like unless it's like a quote or something. I did that a lot. Now I make my own quotes because I want them to look a certain way. Um, but just always, every photo should be your photo. If it's a picture of food, it's a picture of, the, of food that you ate. Um, if it's a picture of a workout, it's a picture of you working out. It's a picture of tennis shoes. It's your tennis shoes, all right? You are interesting. People are following you and nobody else. And you may not believe it yet, but people love your story, all right? So they should be your photos. You don't have to post in the moment. I honestly don't encourage you to do this. If you're like, Monday morning, I need to take a selfie. I need to know what I'm going to write. Um, you know, you're stuck there. If you haven't planned it out, you're stuck there on your phone losing time when you could honestly be doing some other business building things or if you have a family like i don't want you on your phone all the time trying to come up with something to say so what i do is i often actually plan out hey let me see if this works hold on just a second let me see if i can get out of this um let's see let's see what y'all said okay instagram amanda 1211 awesome okay Yes, yes, good, good, Beth. Okay. All right, let's see. Let me share my thing with you. Hold on. I got to find it. Quick time, quick time, quick time. I swear this thing is like. Okay. I don't know why I can't do this. Where in the world? Okay, here, I can search, yes. Mm -hmm. My little thing went away, so I don't have, um... oh, y'all are seeing this, maybe that's why. Let me stop share, hold on, y'all. I promise I'm not an idiot. Okay, okay, sorry, I'm trying to show you my plan app that I use, because that is how I plan out my content. Should I have this pulled up? Oh, it's pouring down right outside. Okay, got it. All right, sorry, now I got it. So this is my phone. Um, one of my favorite apps is this Plan app. You see it's P-L-A-N-N, -N, and you can do the free version. But what I do is I actually, hold on, it likes to be slow. Um, I actually plan out my content. I have these little, you can upload pictures and you can write them and save them. And so like when you see my posts on Instagram, um, it will actually, I may have to show you on the desktop. I don't know why it's being crazy. Okay, that's okay. I can show you on the desktop. <laughs> But because I do, I do pay like $8 a month for it so I can do it on my desktop. And so I'm not always on my phone. Um, but you don't have to do that. You can use the free version for sure. Bear with me just a minute. Okay. All right. So if I were on my phone, it would look like this over here to the right. So it has all my posts that I've already done. And then the ones with the little gray um, arrows in the corner, those are ones that I've uploaded but haven't actually posted yet. So what I do is in my, I just make these little images that say Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And I know that I'm gonna post most days. And I know that on Tuesday I'm gonna do a transformation. So I may not have the picture yet, but I can go ahead and write the post. Um, like Thursday, tomorrow, I knew I wanted to write about coaching. And that support for me so I have it written for the most part but I just don't have the picture put with it yet I can pull the picture and so this helps me plan this helps P-L-A-N-N -N. this helps me plan and it helps me also like if I want to put my pictures together in a grid so I know what my feed looks like okay because I don't want a whole bunch of fitness photos like I don't want just just white quotes like I want it to be a good representation of who I am and what I do and so plan is an awesome app. If you don't have it, please get it tonight, set it up and you can actually start to plan out your posts for the week. So every 
weekend, I get in here and I just kind of, even if it's just like making notes on these days about what I want to talk about, it helps me brain dump and it helps me like I don't lose my thoughts because I have really good ideas and then they go away if I don't write them down. Um, and then also I can post to Instagram from here. So you can see like, and, oh yeah, well, this one's kind of jumbled. I don't know why it looks like that. But like you can see like on this one, how the wording is spaced out. If I were to try to write that on Instagram, it's gonna put all those words straight together. So plan actually like it posts it the way you write it. So that's another good thing, okay? So plan is how I actually make my, my marketing plan every single week. And um, it really is just good stewardship, you guys. Like it's good time management to plan out your, um, to plan out your content and to, um, be in control of it. Okay. So that is one thing. Hold on. I'm trying to make this thing. Um, so don't post in the moment. Like I said, I plan out my content. So I know I'm in control of what I'm doing and what my, what my message is to my followers. And I'm not just living in the moment. And this is something, again, you're going to have to learn to do. You're not going to nail it the first week. You're probably not going to nail it the first month, but just do me a favor this weekend, plan out what you want to say next weekend. We'll talk about that more. Uh, post more than just fitness. Okay. Um, don't worry. You're going to be talking you're going to show your workouts every day in your stories. You don't want an Instagram feed filled with fitness photos, right? Selfies of just you propped up against a wall or with a weight in your hand. That's great. And you're going to do that from time to time. And you want people to see your transformation, but you are more than just a beach body coach. All right. You are more than just a beach body coach. I am a beach body coach that cannot control my slides tonight. I do not know what's wrong with me. Um, you are more than a coach. And if people come and you're just off fitness photos, that gets really boring really quickly. I will tell you that more people connect with me over the mom stuff that I share, the faith stuff that I share, the funny stuff that Milo says, the marriage inspiration. People connect with me over that and then they join my challenge group. So be who you are. You're not just a fitness coach. That should be a part of your strategy every week. But honestly, more often than not, I have stuff that's not fitness, okay? But I cover all that in my stories. So don't worry about that. Sharing versus selling. It can be so easy to start posting pictures of you with your like Shakeology cup in your hand or, you know, a picture of Autumn on your Instagram feed. But don't do that. Don't do that. We are in the business of selling a product, but people buy your story before they buy into your product that you have to, to offer. So as you're sharing your story, yes, talk about fitness. Yes, talk about your journey. Um, share your struggles. Share things that you've overcome, that you are overcoming. Talk about how you've done it. Share your wins. Share your funnies. Um, talk about how health and fitness has impacted your family. You know, like people love it when I show pictures of me and the boys or show things in my stories of them working out with me. And I talk about how valuable that is to me as a mom. And I had no idea that when I needed to get fit, like it would have such a big impact on my kids, right? Share value. When I say share value, that's, you know, I think your posts and your content should always do one of these things. They should educate, they should inspire, they should entertain, or they should invite, okay? So definitely, you know, you can, you can share tips about how to get your kids to eat um, vegetables. You can share a meal plan in your stories. You can share tips for drinking more water. You can share a recipe. You can share encouragement. Maybe if you read your personal development or your devotion or something and it encouraged you in some way, that's value. So be, give, 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 give more than you ask, all right? And don't be afraid of giving away too much because people will come back if you're giving value and they will trust you and they'll be much more likely to join your challenge group. All right. So these are just some examples. Um, like this is a post about, obviously it's a faith-based post. This is, I've, I've read this book made for this. It's an amazing book and God rocks my world while I was reading it and still does. But this is just a faith-based post. This is about my quiet time with God and what he was uh, sharing with me through this, this devotion and this quiet time. And honestly, like if you see how I write, um, it's not just like, oh, I was sitting in bed this morning, like reading my Bible. It's okay, warning. I caught people's attention with the first word and the first couple of sentences, right? I want people to stop and read. You want a good photo and we'll talk about photos, but you also want your words to capture people's attention. So I said, warning, ask God to take you deeper and he is gonna. So people are gonna wanna know what I'm gonna say, right? 
doesn't have anything to do with fitness. It is part of my bio, like I'm a faith-based person. And so this was, this was me sharing my story, my journey, and also adding value by sharing this um, suggested reading, this book, okay? So that was that one, that's one. Um, another one, so this one, the photo captured people's attention. People love this photo. Like I could post it once a week and people would love it. And I think it's just because I look sassy. Um, but it was a sassy kind of post, honestly. So I took the picture to go with the words and it was about, um, this is a really good post. Like if you were struggling in the business, you should go read it. Um, hey, business building mama, did you start a business and feeling super frustrated? So this is a business post. It was not a call to action, honestly. It was really value added. Was I being sassy? Yes, but I was telling my story, sharing my struggles and giving some inspiration and some tips for people who are building a business, all right? So that is another example of that. And wasn't like a, hey, join my team. You know, it was my story. It was my story. I was addressing things that people had told me they struggled with and I shared how I got through things. This was just a funny, this was just a funny, people love this one. People love it when I do quotes or, or things about mom life. I'm just wondering how long I can sit on the couch before getting up and pretending I was cleaning. So not every post should be a book. Like this was like a sentence long, right? So make sure that you're kind of varying your content and you're not just like word vomiting all over people with every single post because people get tired of reading that. I do tend to write a lot, honestly, like that's just how I do it. But I do try to throw in some shorter ones like this today too. Um, and be really real, like be really real with people. It's so easy to take our, our selfies and, um, you know, make it look at the right angle. So you look really good. But like, I wanted people to show that I took this picture and I was like, oh crap, like my waist looks huge and my pants, my sides are hanging over my pants, right? So I showed people, hey, I can take this picture, but this is what it looks like sometimes too. And so this was just me being honest and me sharing my story. And I can't remember if I turned it into an invite. I may have, but I'm never going to invite somebody in a post without talking about my story and what's changed for me or sharing some type of value too, okay? Um, and don't worry, you'll, you'll get your groove, you'll get your words, you'll, you'll, you'll have your inspiration to share too. I know you will. Um, so um, that's posting. Just those were some examples of posts and how to be yourself and how to be real. Um, Instagram stories. This matters just as much as your posts. If honestly, I would wager to say it matters more because um, people love reality. They love reality. You think about all these crazy reality TV shows that just go on and on. The Kardashians, oh my goodness. There's just people following them around with a camera and they're just doing life, right? People love that. And when you post in your stories, um, people feel like they are coming into your world and they get to know you a little bit better. So your Instagram feed should be a little bit more put together. Like I want you guys to take bright, clean photos, um, eye-catching photos as much as possible. And again, that takes practice. But your story should just be a little bit more real. Like be yourself, hot mess and all. Um, like I took the worst picture tonight of Henry at the bar and it was his plate of like leftover spaghetti. But, you know, like people love that stuff. They want to know what we eat. They want to know what my kids eat. Um, but it's a place where you can definitely, definitely share your daily workouts, share the products that you are using. You see me post about my, my go-go juice all the time. I don't say energize, but I'll tell you this, that like most of the people that join my groups, they want the go-go juice or they end up drinking it later on. So it's part of my my marketing and my sales, but it's also really and truly something that I do every day. I love energizing. I love that stuff. It's like magic in a cup. And so I talk about it every day. Um, and it's really easy to talk about it because I love it so much. Um, share some healthy meals. I try to share at least a healthy meal every day. I may not give away a recipe or something, but I do try to share recipes at least a couple of times a week because it's value. People come back for value. Um, and they know if she's sharing this on social media, then what's she giving to the people that join her challenge groups, right? Um, share daily life. I talk about my kids. I share for my devotions every day. Um, if I like to shop or buy an outfit or or something like that or if I watch a favorite TV show like that's kind of daily life and honestly again people are going to connect with you over those things really quickly um, and then they'll follow you for the fitness inspiration too all right so share daily life um, invite daily this is going to be scary for you guys but I want you to start inviting to your challenge groups and maybe you start with like three days a week 
Um, maybe you do an invite series and I've got some things to share with you. I've got some example templates or actually templates you can use to make invite series. Um, but I invite to something daily. It may be, I might invite people to get a free meal plan, um, invite people to a challenge group or to coaching. Um, but I invite people to something daily. I want them to know that I have something for you to join and to be a part of that could change your life, right? And just like in my, my post, when I share about a challenge group, I usually tell my story first, and then I end it with, I have a boot camp that starts such and such date. This is what we're gonna do. Come be a part of this transformation with me. So I do that very often. And when you stop doing that, you stop getting new challengers and new coaches. It's just like everything, it takes time, it takes consistency. Um, Instagram stories, what not to do. <laughs> Don't post like a hundred stories a day. Like there are some coaches that I like, and they're really successful coaches, but it's just not me. Like I go to, if I went to their stories right now, they would have like a hundred little dots up there. That means they have like a hundred stories that they've done today. Like that makes me just want to run and hide. Like I don't want to sit there and watch all those stories, right? Keep it simple. I keep it between 15 and 30 stories a day, usually on the lower side of that, because I don't, I also don't want to be on my phone all the time. Like, I don't want to be on, I don't want my kids to remember me like this, right? Um, I want to be very present. And so I even plan out when I make my social media plan, I plan out the strategic things that I want to post about in my stories. If it's up, I want to share a recipe. If I want to share a meal plan, if I want to invite to a challenge group or coaching, I know what I'm going to be doing that week so that I have some things prepared. Definitely don't just post about fitness. People want to know you. Um, and so they want to know what kind of dog you have. They want to know if you go to church. They want to know where you like to grocery shop. They want to know what your favorite brand of shoes is, you know? So people really love to get to know those things about you. And um, piggybacking on that sounds odd, but don't make it all about you. Um, one of our vital behaviors in on your tracker, on your business activity tracker is recognize. And so you see me do it quite often. I will shout out a challenger um, who's having success or is just excited or I'll recognize a new coach or I've, if a coach hits a goal or something like that or they just are just really inspiring, I'll share their post into my stories. It's so easy to shout out other people and make it not just all about you. And it doesn't have to be fitness related. It could be your best friend or another businesswoman who is just crushing it, that inspires you. But definitely make sure you point some attention at other people each day too. Um, and get creative. Instagram has so many features. Um, does anybody not know how to make a story? Like just, if there's something that you don't know how to do on Instagram, can you tell me right now? And that way I can just show you. Um, you can unmute yourself. That'd probably be the best thing. There's just four of us, but, um, get creative. Like you can talk to your followers. You can do like that here. I'll just show you. I can't, I have I'm such a teacher. Hold on just a second. Um, do I still have my quick time up? Yes. Okay. Um, all right. <laughs> this is the weirdest, like the craziest thing to see on a phone in it. Um, but if you go to the camera up in the top left corner, you have, so it automatically puts the camera on me. You can turn it around if you want to, um, or you can turn it back around, but you can slide, oh, wait, you can slide this thing over and you can do a boomerang and just like do something funny like that. Um, you can do, now you can do these layouts so you can put a bunch of pictures in in the thing, uh, you can just super zoom hands free is so if I record my workout videos, I actually go to hands free and you can change the filter. If I want to change the filter, there are lots of different filters. You play with that find one you like, but if you hold the hands free down for through, just hold it, it'll start to count backwards. And so this is how I record my workout videos every day. And it records them in 15 second clips. And when it's done, it will, I'll just keep talking so it'll show you. But when it's done, it will actually save them in 15 second clips. And so what I do is I go through and I find ones that I wanna save and ones that I don't. And so it see how it has those two little frames down there. If I can click on it, I can do that and delete it. Um, but if I wanna save it, there's a arrow up at the top and I can save it to my phone, okay? And so I don't actually stop my workout every few seconds to post a, a video. What I do is I save them and I go back and I post them later, right? Because I want to get a good workout. 
Um, some other things that you can do are, let's see, you can go live. Um, but let's say I take a picture and I want to add a poll to it. See that little face up at the top? It gives you all the options. These are the options you need to use. Like if you want to add music to your video or something like that, you can search. Um, if you want to do a GIF, if you can search GIFs or just like do that. Um, if you want to um, do a location, I think locations are important because people find you based on locations. Uh, if you want to mention someone else, if I wanted to mention Beth, um, there, I can find you and tag you in my stories. If I tag you in my stories, you can share my story to your stories. <laughs> um, you can do lots of things, use hashtags so people can find you if they're searching hashtags. Uh, you can ask a question, what's your favorite, whatever. Um, you can do polls. You see me do polls all the time uh, and you can change the, the wording there. Okay. So definitely use these features, get creative and just have fun with it. Um, and so now when you go to my feed, you can click on that and it is just, this is me talking. Um, but you can see, let's see, I haven't actually invited today. I added a lot of value, um, but I need to do some type of invite. I have something that I'll do later. Um, but see, I, these people like Laura tagged me in her story. And so I got a notification and I just shared it. Um, and then I asked a question today. This was just something like silly. Honestly, I just wanted to create engagement. And so I can go and I can see who voted in my poll and I can message them. Um, and so this is, I do try to show daily life every day. This was like business. I was sharing business tips with people. Um, then I shared a, just something this like recognizes somebody else. Um, and then my kids, this is just daily life, uh, dinner and that type of thing. Melanie tagged me in an elite story, so I shared it. So there's lots of things you can do with stories and stories are where people are at. Stories are absolutely where people are at. So make sure that you are in stories as well. And again, just be yourself. Um, all right, is that good? Do you guys have questions about any of that? All right, when is she gonna stop talking? Um, let's see, okay. So use the features. I showed you guys all that stuff. Ask questions. This is the best place, like the best place to engage your followers. And the more you engage your followers, the better your algorithm. And honestly, the more opportunity for creating relationships. So if you're going on a date, ask your followers, which outfit should I wear? Put a poll in there and do A or B, right? You can put them side by side. Um, you know, if you are going to a new city, say, hey, I'm going to Cincinnati. You know, tag Cincinnati in your story and say, what are your favorite places to eat? Um, put the question box in there. If you're like, I've never been to a bowling alley, like what, how do I know which ball to use? You know, like I just ask questions and engage your followers. And that is a really, that's a really good strategy. Um, I also have this, this tracker. I, I need to post it. I will post it in our training tonight. You can use this. I would stick with your business activity tracker um, to guide your daily work. And actually, Abby and I are going to start posting check-ins in our training at night so you guys can show us your tracker so we can keep you accountable in doing that because you can't build a business if you're not doing these things. Uh, but this is one another coach created, and it's really good. It gives you like suggestions about what to post, all right? So on Thursday, they suggest you make a coaching post, Friday fitness, Saturday family, that type of thing. And it even walks you through, hey, throughout the day, make this type of story. So it's a, honestly a really good roadmap for social media to guide what you're putting out there. It also has a place for you to track your invites and tells you how many. These little black, heavy black boxes suggest that on Thursday, you invite at least 10 people to a fitness invite and three people to business. And see, you see it says on Saturday and Sunday, really slow down. I like that because I'm all about family, working your business Monday through Friday, making it a priority and hitting your goals that way. So I'll share this as well. Um, some of my favorite apps are um, Told You About Plan, which is what that is on the right. Um, Snapseed, I use it to edit my photos. It's a free one. Um, I just change like the filters and I mean like the lighting on there and things like that. I have a couple of presets that I use, which you can purchase and put into Lightroom. I, I edit my photos that way as well. I do have the white squares around my photos. I use Square Ready to do that. It's a free app. Um, and then plan for, for organizing my content. Um, as far as my stories, I use TikTok, which is when you can add the, 
the music too. Um, I use Unfold. So like this right here on the right, this real clean looking story. I used Unfold to do that free app. Mojo um, is free as well. It's a little more animated. I don't use Ogre anymore, but Canva.com um, is what I use for my desktop. And I'm going to share you share some templates for challenge group invites with you guys, and those will come from Canva. Those are the only type that I can actually share with you that you can edit, all right? Um, let's talk about maintaining a healthy relationship as we close this out. Um, I love this verse, and it just kind of motivates me. In this regard, it is required that managers be found faithful. I believe that as business owners, we have been given social media to manage, right? And if we don't manage it well, then I don't feel like God's really going to bless what we're doing here. All right. So keep maintain a healthy relationship with social media. Um, and these are my best tips for actually doing that. Um, and again, like up here on the top right, it says podcast on healthy use of social media. It's a really good podcast by Christy Wright. I love her. Um, and you'll have a link to that. Definitely set hours for your screen time. On your iPhone, it will actually track how many hours you're on your phone. And so every Sunday I get an update about that. And if it goes up, I'm like, dang it, Rachel, chill out, put your phone down. If it goes down, I'm like, yes, winning, right? Christmas week, it was so far down. Like I was so excited that I really unplugged Christmas week. Um, but set hours, like set a timer. If you sit down to post or to connect or add followers, like set a timer for yourself so you don't get sucked into scrolling. Um, be where your feet are at. I'm not gonna lie, this is hard for me. But it's definitely something this year I'm working on is I steward well. Um, family time, date night, time with friends should be just that. Hide your phone if you're tempted to reach for it. Put it on airplane mode if you want to be able to take pictures. But just be where you're at. You know, if you're on your phone, you're not there where you're at. Uh, and definitely plan ahead. I talked about this a lot. Plan your content so you can be more present and confident in your daily vitals. Um, and then ask for help. Get an accountability partner. If you're struggling with being on your phone, like get an accountability partner. One of my coaches, Jade, posted this week about, I don't know what it is. I got to find out what it is. But it tells her, it like shuts down her Facebook after she's been on it for very long. And I don't, I don't even know where she found that. I got to find out. So definitely set some boundaries for yourself when it comes to social media. And just like everything I'm going to teach you to do in this business, you have to be consistent. You have to be consistent with posting. You have to be consistent with inviting. You have to be consistent with, with um, following people and connecting with people. That's why it's on this thing to do every single day. Um, and there are actually even like time amounts of time beside these actions. So you can like keep it in check and not just like, you know, spend all day doing whatever it is that we end up doing. Um, so that is that. The other thing that I wanted to show you before we go is um, this Google Drive. And I just shared it with my coaches. But um, it actually has, and I know Abby has this too. So she just, we, we do things together. <laughs> we do things together. Um, so usually when I do something, she does something and vice versa. But let me show you guys this, um, which is really cool. I pray you guys find success partners like Abby and I have each other. So this is my new coach resources, Google Drive. And there are lots of different things in here, but I want to show you um, sample IG story templates. This is just a document that I made for you guys. Took some templates that I've made in Canva. Uh, I made copies of them. And if you click on them, like it will actually take you to Canva. You have to do this on your desktop. And I've got just some examples, um, not examples, but they're actually things that you can use and edit and make your own. Um, and so like there are stories I've created about challenge groups in the past. And like you would just take my photo out and put your photo in, change some of the wording. You may not have struggled with some of the things that I struggled with, um, but they are good. And you can like put your own polls, your question boxes in there and things like that. So those are for you to use, for you to start actually, you know, getting confident and inviting people. Because if people don't know that you're running a challenge group, then they're not going to know that they can join you. All right. So that is something that we did for you guys. Um, I think that's it. I think that's it. Do you guys have any questions for me? No. <laughs> that's a lot. Gave you lots of stuff to do, did I? Um, so just take it slowly, one thing at a time. I will post this PDF in our, our new coach training. I'll post that um, 
the 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 social the tracker that has the suggested content for posts. Um, was there anything else that you need that I said I would post? No, I'll post the recording. So if you want to go back and watch this again, you can. Social media is good. It's good. Just like just take it one thing at a time, one thing at a time, but definitely make sure you're posting, you're in your stories. It's going to be so imperfect. Mine is still imperfect, um, but people love imperfect. Okay. So just be yourself, just be yourself. And if you need help with a post, you're like, Hey, Rachel, Hey, Abby, will you read this before I post it? Do, but you need to be inviting to a challenge group. Success club is our goal. Okay. Emerald is our goal this month, your first month. And I know you guys can do that. You guys are some good, good hustler people. Okay. All right. That's all I got. All right. <laughs> all right, you guys. Good night.